Well, if you're a regular listener to the uh, Thriving Dentist Show, you know that I like to look outside of dentistry uh, for inspiration and lessons and, and think about how we can apply this. And, uh, you know, I'm a, a absolute advocate of continuous improvement. I simply want to be better tomorrow than I am uh, to, today. Um, and I, I guess you'd have to be living in a cave uh, to not have noticed that Southwest Airlines had a major meltdown uh, around the holidays uh, at the end of 2022. Now, I am uh, a very frequent flyer on Southwest Airlines, um, and I have great appreciation for, for, for them. But initially, the meltdown, it was almost uh, a week of interrupted, you know, canceled flights. There were thousands and tens of thousands of canceled flights. And there was the assumption for many people that the cause of that was weather, the bad weather that was being experienced. But the other airlines didn't have thousands of canceled flights. So eh, we knew it wasn't weather. Uh, but recently, um, I learned uh, from a longtime Southwest Airlines pilot what the actual problem was. And the pilot's name is Larry Lanero, uh, Larry Lanero. And, and I'm going to read something that will put some facts around what actually happened. And then we'll talk about the takeaways that we can take away and apply in a dental practice. So here's what Larry, you know, had to say about this. And I, I truly respect his perspective. Uh, what happened to Southwest Airlines? I've been a pilot for Southwest Airlines for over 35 years. I've given my heart and soul to Southwest Airlines during those years. And quite honestly, Southwest Airlines has given its heart and soul to me and my family. Many of you have asked what caused this epic meltdown. Unfortunately, the frontline employees have been watching this meltdown coming like a slow motion train wreck for some time. And we've been begging our leadership to make much needed changes in order to avoid it. Uh, what happened recently started two decades ago. Herb Kelleher was the brilliant CEO of Southwest Airlines until 2004. He was the first operationally oriented leader. Uh, Herb spent lots of time on the front line. He always had his pulse on the day-to-day -day operations and the people who ran it. That philosophy flowed down through the ranks of leadership to the frontline managers. We were a tight operation from top to bottom. We had tools, leadership, and employee buy-in. Everything that was needed to run a first-class operation. When Herb retired in 2004, Gary Kelly became the new CEO. Gary was an accountant by education, and his style leading Southwest Airlines became more focused on finances and less on operations. He did not sp spend much time on the front lines. He didn't engage frontline employees much. When the CEO doesn't get out in the trenches and need to do the lower levels of management, Gary named another accountant to be his COO, the person responsible for day-to-day -day operations, the chief operating officer. This new COO had little or no operational background. This trickled down through the lower levels of leadership as well. They all disengaged the operation, disengaged the employees, and focused more on return on investment, stock buybacks, and Wall Street. This approach worked for Gary's first eight years because we were still riding the strong wave uh, that Herb had built. But as time went on, the operation began to deteriorate. There was little investment in upgrading technology. After all, how do you measure the return on investment on infrastructure or the tools we needed to operate efficiently and consistently? As the frontline employees began to see the deterioration in our operation, we began to warn our leadership. We educated them, we informed them, we made suggestions to them, but all to no avail. The focus was on finances, not operation. As we saw more and more deterioris uh, deterioration in operation, our asked turned to pleas. The pleas turned to dire warnings, but they went unheeded. After all, the stock price was up, so what could be wrong? We were a motivated, willing, and proud employee group wanting to serve our customers and uphold the tradition of our beloved airline. The airline we built and the airline that the traveling public grew to cheer for us and love. But we were watching in frustration and disbelief as our once amazing airline was becoming a house of cards. A half dozen small scale meltdowns occurred during the mid to late 2010s. With each mini meltdown, leadership continued to ignore the pleas and warnings of the employees in the trenches. We were still operating with 1990s technology. We didn't have the tools we needed on the front line to operate the sophisticated and large airline we'd become. We could see that the wheels were about ready to fall off the bus, but no one in leadership would heed our pleas. 
When COVID happened, Southwest Airlines scaled back considerably, as did all the airlines, for about two years. This helped conceal the serious problems in technology, infrastructure, and staffing that were occurring and being ignored. But as we ramped back up the operation, the attention to the operation was, was waiting to show its ugly head. Now, Gary Kelly retired as CEO in early 2022. Bob Jordan was named CEO. He was a more operationally oriented leader. He replaced our chief operating officer with a very smart man, and they announced their priority would be to upgrade our airline's technology and provide the frontline employees the operational tools we needed to care for our customers' employees. Finally, someone acknowledged the elephant in the room. But two decades of neglect take several years to overcome. And unfortunately, to our horror, our house of cards came tumbling down um, the last week of 2022 as a routine winter storm broke our 1990s operating system. The frontline employees were ready and on station. We were properly staffed. We were at the airports. Heck, we were on the airplanes. But our antiquated software system failed, coupled with a decade-old system of having to manage 20,000 frontline employees by phone calls. No automation had been developed to run this sophisticated machine. Naren, I'm going to pause there for a minute. Can you imagine Southwest Airlines day-to-day -day managing 20,000 frontline employees <laughs> by phone? By phone yeah, call? I just, it's, it's a little bit like a nightmare. I, I, we, so, have, we have- Well, the similarity in dentistry is that many dentists are managing the confirmation process of their patients by phone. Which, which is not 1990s technology, yeah. that's 1960s technology. So yeah. think about the parallels here. Let me keep, keep, I'm coming to the finish line here. We had a routine winter storm across the Midwest during that week. A larger than normal number of flights were canceled as a result. But what should have been one minor inconvenient day turned into this nightmare. After all, American, United, Delta, and other airlines operated with only minor flight disruptions. The two decades of neglect of Southwest leadership caused the airline to lose track of all of its crews. All of us. We were there with our customers at the jet, ready to go. But there was no way to assign us, to confirm us, to release us, to fly the flight. And we watched as our customers got stranded without their luggage, missing uh, their holiday travel. I believe that our new CEO, Bob Jordan, inherited a mess. This meltdown was not his failure, but the failure of those before him. I believe he has the right priorities, but it will take time to right the ship. A few years at a minimum. Old leaders need to be replaced. Operationally oriented managers need to be brought in. I hope and pray Bob can execute on his promises to fix our once proud airline. Time will tell. It's been a punch in the gut for us frontline employees. We care for the traveling public. We have spent our entire careers serving you safely, efficiently, with love and pride. By the way, that's been my experience as a long time multi-million dollar or multi-million mile airline, Southwest Airlines flyer, multi-million miles. That's been my experience. Um, so I've been served safely, efficiently, with love and pride. We are sorry for the chaos, inconvenience, and frustration our airline caused you. We are angry. We are embarrassed. We are sad. Like you, the traveling public, we have been let down by our own leaders. Herb once said, the biggest threat to South Southwest Airlines will come from within, not from other airlines. What a visionary he was. I miss Herb now more than ever. Well, there's the full story on what actually happened for the Southwest meltdown.